Ignacia, it's really lovely to have you here today. Um, for our audience, Ignacia is our second uh, digital artist in residency, um, which is really exciting. Um, do you want to speak, share a little bit about yourself? Well, hi, first of all, and thank you for the invitation. For me, this is a, a huge deal. Uh, well, I am a photographer from Spain. And for a little overview of my work, uh, what I do is try to research into how uh, social, economical, and political s s structures are made present in our everyday life. So right now, um, I'm working with interactivity, so I'm creating video games. Yeah, amazing. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think the last time I saw you was in Ireland. You showed me one of the video games that you made. Um, could you share a little bit about how you got to this uh, like need for things to be a bit more interactive? Because I know that you had a bit more of a classical photographic practice beforehand. Yes, uh, I have studied in blank paper school, so I belong to this documentary background. Mm -hmm. And I have been doing this kind of photograph for 10 years. I have published um, several scenes and other stuff. But after 10 years making this kind of image, I feel that like something is missing. I, I wanted for more. So I did decided to explore first the objectual, ob objectual size of photography. But then I realized that mm, it was still a bit boring for me. So I asked my, my, myself, which is the last frontier that I haven't crossed yet? And, and then it's interactivity. So this is how I land into video games and how I decide to create this kind of uh, interactive ex experience. Um, yeah, that's, that's... No, amazing. That's really great. So could maybe I just want to ask a little bit more about that because it's super interesting. It basically the the image wasn't enough for you what 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 wasn't enough was it like the the photograph's capacity to share a story or was it literally like the materiality of it was like you were just over it you got bored of how like two-dimensional images look like or like what what was your concern this is a complex topic i think that today to so images is not enough. I mean, I think that contemporary photographers, what we create is experience to be enjoyed by the viewers. And right now, uh, we watch thousands of images every day in our mobile phone. Mm -hmm. So this idea of create images, hang, the, hang them in the wall or even in a book, I think that is like to be very um, like close-minded so if we expand our limits to not only interaction but also about use a uh, sound use music to create a more um, expansive experience i think that the possibilities the toolbox that we photographers have right now is unlimited so why why not to use it right and not use it cool yeah that's really exciting um um I, I can really understand what you're saying um yeah and I'm really I'm like really interested in like the toolbox that you've created for yourself I, I know a little bit about it but maybe do you want to share what your favorite tools in your toolbox are right now in terms of your practice right now I'm working a lot with the sound I think that the sound works also at the image. It 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 put you in in certain mood mm -hmm. that you can use to to go with the pictures and to create this kind of emotional state. Mm -hmm. um, in that case, uh, the project that I'm working right right now is named Kickflip. It's about the well. It's about Going back to to the time where when I was a teenager, and recover some memory of us, of myself and my group of friends, and try to dig into those little s, 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 s stories 
to understand how the 2000 decade uh, was. Because at the end, using this micro history of our group of friends, it's not only about us, it's, all, it's about all the millennial generation. Mm. So, um, in that way, the how the sound works, it's little subtle because all mo mostly there are two kinds of sounds, the voice re recording of myself mm -hmm. that drove the experience in in certain way and it's a bit tricky because uh, it has to be re recorded uh, keeping all of this intention, all of these like common la language, because it's also a document about that time when we use expression that we use at that time. It's a, a sound document. And yeah. also the other uh, part of the song are skating sounds. Uh, in that case, I didn't want to download a library of professional skating songs. I'm recording the songs of myself because the project is about um, how it was to be a teenager in a little town in the north of Spain. Mm -hmm. And this time of, of this discover new things, this time of try to do things and don't know how to do that. In fact, the name Kickflip is because of, of that we never learn how to do a kickflip. So this, I think, is a big metaphor of what means to be a teenager. Yeah. So if the sound sound like a bit, like not a skill, I, I, I don't know how the English clumsy, I think, no, I, I, I don't know. When you are not a skill, you know, and you listen the sound like a bit bad, yeah, like it's a bit lo-fi, I guess. Yes. Yeah. No, no, like an uh, amateur is, is yeah. Yeah. this idea of okay, this is not a good a skater. Yeah. This is the mood that I want to create because all the stories are in that direction. Yeah. So well, this amplifies the power of, of photography, right? The power of tell stories and the power to dig into the things that are important for us. So that's why I'm very in, in interesting, no, in interested in this into new this new form of na narrative. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I really I can connect with that a lot. Like I feel like uh, well, you've said a lot of really important things here. Like there's a relationship between like a multi-sensory experience and memory right like there's certain sounds that you are uh, like in your soundscape of this um work that you're talking about in the video game um that uh um, should and help to trigger certain and take you to a certain time and not only the visual mm. um but the the other thing i found interesting that you said because you used to be like quite a strict or conservative documentary photographer and still in this case you uh, consider what you're making to be a document of a certain um, time or experience and I don't know I just found that really interesting so it really is more about the medium and mm. it, like expanding on the photographic medium becoming I don't know maybe I don't know if you identify as a multimedia artist or whatever but expanding on the how you tell the story rather than um choosing to tell different stories do you understand what I mean yeah, yeah. so I found that really interesting because uh the intention is still the same um and then you're just experimenting with yeah with different ways to do that um how how has the reception been for you like moving from um yes something more like the more established or you know uh understood type of photography to like doing these interactive and quite experimental things right like you came to Al which you know there are people that come to Al with uh um like an A2 
portfolio folder like super classic like you know has people have been doing for years and you came with this box and two sets of headphones and like a joystick basically um how has the reception been there are people who love the project and understand why it is a video game Mm. There are people who say this is not a video game. This is an interactive ex ex experience. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't care very much. Yeah, it doesn't uh, matter. Yeah. Uh, this is curious because the people who, who usually told this to me, I ask them, what do you expect of a video game? Mm. And I expect uh, like, a, you know, Super Mario or Call of Duty this kind of commercial video games and i told them do you know uh the walking simulator genre uh, because it is about discover and a story and this is like the the genre that my my video game is going to fit into right mm -hmm. um so they ask also myself and why to create a video game and not a film or video whatever yeah yeah And I say, because I will lose this interactivity, this experience of let the player or the viewer yeah. uh, explore the skate park and discover by himself the stories and choose in which kind of sto stories the viewer wants to dig into or, yeah. or let it go, right? Yeah. Also the decision, the idea of I can choose that story Or choose this story. If I choose this, I'm going to miss that. I have to choose, right? So yeah. there are in interactivity there that I think that talk a lot about ourselves. So I think that it creates a really nice and powerful experience. Experience, yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm wondering, like I, I think, you know, I think interactivity is like engagement, audience engagement in general is like something really powerful that um not many artists know how to approach like I think it's it's something that like needs to be developed in your practice and whatever and I think that you know there's an element of it I'm just wondering like why it's so important for you the interactivity other than okay so you want an experience that is is like multifaceted I really understand that um do you think that there's that they take that maybe audience take the story with them or they um uh are ch more proactive in, in engaging with the story that you're trying to tell if it's interactive like do you know what I mean what is exactly the the thing for you that makes it so important that there's that kind of engagement mm -hmm. um When I saw the first the first phot photograph that I ever saw, yeah. it, it was to a woman who is a lawyer, and she told me the beautiful of art is to connect people who share a vision of the world. Yeah. So this really uh, keep in myself like, oh, yeah. wow, this is true, right? So... With this option of interactivity is the way to tell the viewer, okay, let's 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 have a conversation. Yeah, that's talk beautiful. about this topic or this topic or this other topic. Yeah. So is his choice or her choice, right? Yeah. So um, that's that's that that's why interactive creates this kind of engagement uh, with yeah. the viewer. Yeah, that's um, beautiful. Um, and I really agree. I remember like when I was a first year photography student and I didn't know anything about photography. I didn't know like what the difference between the shutter speed was and like an abstract, like I was just totally, you know, and um, I, we got homework. Uh, it was a documentary photography class actually and we got homework and the teacher asked for us to bring a contact sheet and I'd never heard that word before because I came from like a painting background and I just didn't know what she was asking me to do. And I came to her and I said like, hey, I, you know, I really want to do the assignment but I don't know what a contact sheet is. And she said, oh, 
don't worry like she explained to me what a contact sheet was and she kind of said don't worry like people get really like into the medium and the camera and whatever but actually photography is way more about people and and yeah connectivity and stuff and I really took that with me so I really understand yeah I understand where you're coming from and I totally agree and relate um cool okay I feel like we got to the bottom of that and I feel like now I really am excited to know what you're busy with at the moment I know you have two installations that you're working on you want to share a bit about what you're doing uh yeah sure um well before that yeah I, I, I wanted to talk about other thing it's not about interactivity but it also about the medium itself right yeah. um, I think that the photography right now is uh, or one big part of photography is 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 uh, drove with photo books and um, it's cool but I think that we are like I don't know how to say in English like closing in ourselves you know so at the end, when you go to photo book fair, there is the same people who is producing the photo works. So I think that we have to find a strategies to reach new public. Mm. And I ask a lot of myself, what happens if um, contemporary art uh, goes into the commercial video game market? Mm. There are a lot of indie video games that are very interesting and um, I think that right now these games open at the gate to other kind of experience more related with contemporary arts yeah so I think that when this video game is is finished I I would like to release it in in commercial platforms that's yeah and I think that the huge or or the real communication pro process is going to happen there you know and I think that it's possible to reach new public and to um, make these people develop an in interest in photography yeah you know I, I think that nowadays photographers have I mean photography have a super important role in society Social me media is mainly the reason, but photo photographer, yeah. not. Yeah. Especially photographers who are re related with contemporary photography or yeah. contemporary art. I ask a lot myself why 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 this happen. Yeah. Do you yeah. have an, an answer? Why does this happen? That like our role is changed. Do you mean, as mm -hmm. photographers? Is that is that is that the question you're asking? Yeah. Yeah. Why our world has changed? Well, yeah. I think there's there's many elements. I think, um, the role of the image has changed. Not only the role of the photographer. Like, uh, now that there can be images that we know are fake, mm -hmm. or images that are like AI generated, which doesn't necessarily mean they're fake, but they're like created in a different process um it's like I think we have a human instinct to believe what we see so when something is put in an image we identify it as truth but we're not in that place anymore um and also that we're in a time in the world um where a massive part of the discourse is that there is no such thing as as a truth as one objective truth like there isn't um and that is like contributing to that is the fact that everyone has a camera on their phone for example and everyone can take a photo and that can be their truth and that can be their perspective and their narrative and um so yeah, I think there's lots of elements to it. I think maybe um, there is an overload of images and images have lost a, an element of their worth or wow. of their, of like the trustworthiness in them. There's an element of like, 
what if everyone can take a photo why what what kind of professional do that that an amateur can't um I think probably a lot in my opinion just in terms of like the the amount of time that they that photographers um spend um like mastering photography as a communicative skill it, it's like a whole different thing um but and and that means like making conscious decisions and not only reactive decisions which is what most people will do when they take a photo with their phone it it will be related to some subconscious thing oh I don't know what just happened is that because I did like that that's crazy um anyway that's just some thoughts on that I don't know and I mean social media is 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 like a mess it's it's a it's a very disembodied space uh something that we actually spoke about with our former artist in residency and um like the kind of craft and medium that you're speaking about the art form that you're speaking about is very embodied and the point of it is connectivity and to to you know make yeah make connections between people which is the opposite of the point of social media I guess um yeah I don't know what do you think about any of this I think that right now the photography is more democratic than ever mm. um, it turns into into words I mean before we write we speak with words and now we communicate with 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 images it, it, uh, we can just send, uh, I don't know, a uh, uh, picture of an empty uh, paper roll to a roommate to say, hey, buy pa oh, paper. Yeah. So we, we, we don't need even to write it. The understanding of the image is is great right now. This is amazing. Yeah. So in I think, yeah, that the role of photographers or image makers, I it is it need to change uh it need to evolve maybe that's that why i feel that the the the, the image in, is in, in, in the world is is boring <laughs> yeah you know i can uh, understand that i mean i think as as a as humans we've gone through an evolution of but before language there was images uh not for photographic images but like drawings and symbols and whatever and then language came and that became more like the you know main communicative body and then it swapped and it swapped and it swapped and it swapped again and yeah like we're in a particularly interesting point right now where you're right like we can communicate solely with images um even if we're reading different things out of them and we're probably in a point in history where words mean like vastly different things to different people so maybe images do feel more reliable after all um yeah no I really understand what you're saying and I really understand like your urge to go out of just the image um yeah in order to I guess maybe to have a bit more control over what you're sharing or telling or what do you think? Mm, more control in the sense that the message is more clear or? Mm. I don't know. I'm asking. Like, you know, when you put something out there, you have no idea what people are going to take from what you're, what you're putting out there, you know? Yeah, I think that how the image works is like a bomb, you know? It explodes and you don't know what is going to happen i yeah. mean uh you know where you put the bomb but you don't know who is going to to hit for real you can have an, an idea so i will i i i guess i don't put bombs just in case <laughs> <laughs> uh what what i wanted to say is like the image Im imagine that you put like a image of a house that is blue and is near the sea 
And for me, it can tell only that. Uh, House Blue are the seeds, but for somebody can uh, re remember to when that people was a child and have some connection yeah. about grandparents. I, I, you know, yes, yeah. I think that this is the the real magic of images. Yeah, and we don't have to avoid that as photographers. I think mm -hmm. that we have to play with that and to work in layers. And when we yeah. develop project, we try to create this kind of travel, like a treasure map. Yeah. But you you don't never know where the viewer where is going taken. So yeah. And I think I yes. think this work of with le, 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 layers applies also to film to video games to yeah, of course. visual work yeah i don't know if i answer your question no yeah you did i think i think you're totally right i think uh where i mean the worry for many makers i know is is that people will see and what they are presenting that the audience will see only what they already know and that that's what is always going to be reflected back in the images as you say like if it reminds you of something that's where it will take you um but I totally agree with you that like a layered approach is is um yeah I suppose like if there's a certain consciousness about the fact that you're coming at this narrative or this story that you're sharing from a personal place and from a relatable place um then you can like play with those layers a bit more i i i think um yeah 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 i don't know you've given me a lot to think about um you've given me a lot to think about so uh i don't want to i want to think about it you know and then carry on the conversation um yeah yeah so, me, yeah no you 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 asked me also about uh what I'm working right right now. If I yeah, I'd love to hear, and maybe you can also speak to, like, what you're working on right now, and how maybe you attempt to approach it in this like layered, from this layered point of view, or, or yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm working in several projects at same same time and also we have an independence space for photography here in Spain uh, so the first the projects the first one that I'm wo working on is this project Kiflip and uh, in this project using these uh, sto uh, stories the kind of topics that I'm digging into is for example um the search of own identity through me me music uh we were crazy people about hip hop and uh right now if we look back um we think about these these songs that we li listen at that time there are some interesting topics first of one is the construction of masculinity uh mm -hmm. we discovered today that in these lyrics, there are some message about, like, you know, you have to be strong and defend your friends and a lot of aggressive behaviors, uh, like, I think are quite toxic right now. Uh, for example, do you re re remember the film Eight Miles from Eminem? Yeah. yeah. It was an, an actor there. There are an S S scene where he fights with another guy for some stupid things. At that time, we saw that, like, oh, this is cool, you know. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> today is like, oh my God, really? We have grown up with these values. We yeah. really need to think about that. Um, yeah. But it's not also about music, it's also about the inner dynamics of the group of friends. Mm -hmm. That there are things that today happen in other ways, right? For example, there are one S S S a story. That a friends of my my myself uh tell like um all of we we were wearing like this kind of hoodies and t-shirts or hip hop bands and he said hey I was wearing this these garments but I really never liked hip hop and I asked him but why 
was you wearing this, 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 these clothes? And he said, because I wanted to feel to be part of the group. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. I think that this is a topic, a classic topic of the the adolescence, the 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 teenager times, right? But um we think to I mean I, I I think that we have to talk about that and also the newer generations to understand hey this happened to every people you are not going to feel part of the group wearing this garment. You know uh, I think that also is uh, like a social labor in the way in the perspective of arts that it's it's cool in my point of view you know it's, it's not about to be a teacher it's just about to tell our own personal stories and then every people is going to think what we'll have to think right yeah other chapter is about love at that time, do you re remember uh, TV shows, TV shows like Sex and the City, yeah. where love was portrayed like a fairy tale, romantic ideal love? And today we know that love doesn't work in that way. So, yeah. but at the end, this is a document about the feelings of that time because at the end, uh, this uh, mood justify an industry of love you know so this kind of documentation is the documentation that i'm in interested in also because i think that photographers we are not superheroes <laughs> i mean uh, for me it's hard to believe that um photographer or a visual artist is able to talk about big topics you know uh we are not expert in science in philosophy um the medium we work with is this expansive medium so we can do a serious uh, study about climatic change we have to work with images and in my uh, approach i work with the things that are surrounding me because are the only things that I understand and I feel that I can talk about that. And yeah. If I have to talk about an, another topic, I have to find the, the point of view where I am honest and I talk from who I am, you know? Yeah. Uh, for, ex you are. for example, uh, another project that I'm wor working in, um, I was in a re re residency in Greece, uh, re re returned to it Itaca, <coughs> sorry, is the name, um, the residency was amazing, to be honest, it was such a great experience with Nina and all, all of, of the colleagues, it was so, so great, and uh, the goal of the residency was to talk about well to start a project that in some way it was related with Ulysses um I was like oh uh, I, I, I I I don't know what to say about Ulysses you know it's a text about a lot of years ago um what I do so I started to think okay what have Ulysses that can be interesting to me and I thought, okay, so one of the main characters is the sea, the Mediterranean Sea. And I cannot think about the Mediterranean Sea without thinking in all the, the refugees and the crisis. First of all, because I, I was se several times um, a volunteer in a refugee camp, but also I think that I can't approach this topic uh, talking about the refugees, you know, uh, even if I work with them, I think that the image is not enough. And I don't have um, the no knowledge of develop a deep investigation uh, for that. So I started to think, okay, what 
I have to approach this topic, right? So what I did is to create a, a debate with all of the partners of the, the, the residency and the curator, the artist and the curator, uh, to talk about this. And uh, one of the most interesting reflection that occurs there was to understand our place. So at the end, I am a, a guy from Spain. Uh, in my every day, is not related with the refugees topic, but I am a, a citizen of Europe and I have a responsibility of, with politics uh, as all citizens in my point of view. So I started to think about that topic in this way of, okay, how politics are related with this topic. So this is the approach that I going, I'm, I'm going to have with this pro project because the way that I can um, in, influence is with the vote. Yeah. So I started to work with the, um, uh, the formularies that the asylum seekers have to film so at the end, the work is not about the refugees, it's about the political structures that handle this issue. So yeah. it's not to work personal with the refugees because I have several ethic issues with that because at the end you are make, make them victims again. Yeah. So the the project is going to ask responsibilities to ourselves yeah. because we vote the political parties to create these laws yeah. these laws that for example uh, when i was in the residency four children die drowned in the in the sea in front of the greece coast yeah. uh, coast, coast wards i think this is the word and why? Because they were in the limit with Turkey and they supposed to be in the Turkey limit. So the Greek people couldn't uh, re rescue them and the yeah. people never arrived. Um, and I think that they also are not allowed to communicate. So at the end, four children died. So yeah. wow, I think that the the point of view that I can have is that to ask re responsibilities to our government. Yeah. So, well, yeah. this is another work. That I'm no, I, no, you've said a lot and they're kind of like all really connected. Like I see, you know, what you're speaking about um, in the first, in the first uh, chapter about um, like toxic masculinity and the group mentality that comes with it that is kind of like a like a microcosm like an everyday experience of something much bigger which is then like tribalism which we're plagued with at the moment in the world and that's why there are so many refugee crises and um everyone is like throwing away responsibility of who who should deal with it which tribe needs to like take control over the situation so everything to me is super connected um which is i mean the sign of a well developed practice i think um and also i really really appreciate what you said about um you know finding your your way into this topic that is causing you worry um i think we see in the progression of photography in in professional photo in photographers um we see that maybe in previous generations there was uh uh an emphasis on thinking about which idea which stories are important to tell basically and I think maybe our generation or the, you know, yeah, at this time, there is uh, two questions. There is which stories are important to tell and whose story is it to tell? Um, and I think that is a really important progression that has happened in the medium and in the field. 
And that's not to say that if it's not your personal experience, you shouldn't engage with it. And unfortunately, often I think that that is what people take away from from that in our generation. So I think the way that you're dealing with it, with finding your influence and your impact and like investigating that is really just really important and really um honest and and genuine and like within your means basically within your means and your resources and coming from your perspective um so I really appreciate that that like you didn't see you didn't think to yourself oh I'm not a I'm not a you know expert on refugees so I can't tackle this topic at all but actually finding the way that you can speak to it um yeah I think that's really powerful um like this micro historical ap approach to work with document for example in these uh formularies uh for the um asylum seeker applications there are questions like do you have a PayPal account? Do you have a car? So there is the, mic the micro historical approach. I mean, you can see how social differences are made. And yeah. then I think that only putting this question on a screen, it's enough to create empathy. And yeah, 100%. Empathy will make you both one party and not other party if the refugees topic is in the agenda, right? So, yeah, yeah this this is my approach. This is what I wanted to mean, that we cannot work with big... Big topics, but you can work with empathy. <laughs> maybe <laughs> I, I say it wrong. It's not that we cannot work with big topic. It's like we cannot have a approach that we pretend to create some knowledge about that because we don't do that the mm -hmm. image doesn't work in that way and we don't yeah. have the skills or the knowledge to uh, this is what I wanted to no no I totally understand I mean yeah I think what I see in your practice we've spoken about it we spoke about it to begin with about like the importance of the 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 sensory experience the interactivity and all of those things as a as a tool for connection and like now you've used the word empathy and I think that is probably like what like I see at the core of your practice is that you um you are using this medium in its expansive form in its most expansive form to trigger um empathy and like instill that in viewers um and just like open them up to thinking about certain things rather than giving a maybe a direct answer or a you know um, so I think that's really important um, and it's like a really great contribution to the field and to, I don't know, your society, our society, communities. Yeah, um, I think that, yeah, I'm sure we can speak about these things for much, much longer. Um, but I just wanted to ask you two last things, first of all. So when are your installations showing, just so that our audience can know? And secondly, if you have anything you want to close with. Uh, I'm going to have two shows uh, at the end of this month. Um, I'm going to show Kiflip in Obertura. It's an art fair in Carabanchel, Madrid. And also I won um, one of the prize of Circuitos. It's a prize uh, from Spain. Uh, so I'm going to show a new project there too with a big installation and um, it's also at the end of this month <laughs> so it's yeah no congratulations I look forward to seeing um, yeah at least images of how it all looks like um, yeah amazing and is there anything that you want to close with that you want to say to uh, yeah I, I was talking before also about El Local is our independence space for photography. It's in Madrid City Center. Um, so I would like to invite uh, anyone who comes to Spain to visit us. Just write that on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, 
we will be there so that's amazing that's a great closing sentence very welcome okay cool well thank you so much for speaking with me today thank you I really it. and i i'm sure i'll see you again soon hopefully in real life yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> all right thank you bye bye